Good evening, and thank you for your attention. My name is Zen Honeycutt, and I'm the proud daughter of two public school teachers. I'm also the parent of two children in Buncombe County Public Schools. One of my sons, formerly a straight-A student, outgoing happy kid, recently told us that he felt depressed. Uh, we were totally surprised, and at that time, he was getting a 30 and a 50 in his two favorite classes. This is his junior year, the most important year for college applications, and um, the fact is, is that his chances of getting in his t into a top-tier college have just been severely impacted. After having researched wireless radiation for several years now, I wondered if the wireless radiation in the classes from the routers uh, were a contributing factor. And I have been asking the school board to address this issue for a year now, and I bring this issue to again because it continues to be an urgent safety issue. The Atlantic just published an article saying that 56.5% of teens are depressed now. And um, in a 2015 study on EMFs published by, uh, by Dr. Martin Paul, published in the Journal of Chemical Neuroanatomy, it's peer reviewed, he said, regarding the impact of non-thermal EMFs on the brain, extensive ep epidemiological studies performed over the past 50 years and five criteria for causality all collectively show that non-thermal microwave EMF exposures produce d diverse neuropsychiatric effects. And in a recent EMF hazard summit, which I will send you a clip of, there was a doctor that shared that a girl was sitting under a router at school. She asked to be moved. She was denied that request, she, and she committed suicide. I do not want that to happen here. My son is here tonight. He will tell you about his experience. And I am asking the board, do we have to lose one of our children to suicide for us to pay attention to this issue? I hope not. So I'm asking you to form a committee to address the issues and the levels of wireless exposure in schools and to reduce the exposure to our children. And this would start with consistently measuring the levels. There's a school called Limbrick School. I gave you a handout on that. They did an assessment. They lowered their levels by 81 to 98 percent. We can do that, and the, the, all of the devices will still work perfectly fine. And so I'm just asking for everybody to pay attention to this issue and to take action, and I want to thank you so much for your time and your attention. Thank you. Mary Ann Tierney. I'm Mary Ann Tierney from the Reynolds District. I'm a registered nurse, an electromagnetic radiation specialist, and the director of Safe Tech NC. During the enrollment process for my kindergartner in 2016, I presented my concerns about wireless radiation in schools to the BCS administrators and board. I learned BCS follows the safety standards of the F FCC, which is not a health agency. The wireless routers in schools emit the same radiation as cell phones, yet at far more extreme levels, at least 25,000 microwatts per meter square at six feet away. Unbiased standards by the European Academy of Environmental Medicine and the Building Biology Institute call for 10 or less microwatts. Since 2015, Harvard's Center for Ethics published an investigative report captured agency documenting the revolving door between the wireless industry and the FCC. Last August, the US Court of Appeals found the FCC guilty of ignoring the enormous body of evidence of health effects from radiation at levels far below the FCC limits. Its 26-year-old standards account only for the heating of skin, no long-term effects from 15,000 studies. Clear evidence of carcinogenesis and DNA damage were found from cell phone radiation by the National Toxicology Program in its $30 million study NTP is part of the National Institutes of Health, our government. That study prompted the American Academy of Pediatrics to issue safety guidelines. These doctors and the California and Massachusetts medical societies have urged the FCC to change its standards. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology study at the US Military Academy found students using computers in classrooms had final scores 18% of a standard deviation lower than scores of students in classrooms that prohibit computers. Please implement simple, free solutions to provide radiation-free schools for our teachers and our beloved students. These ideas are included in Zen's packet. Thank you. Thank you.
Todd Honeycutt. Hi there. I'm Todd Honeycutt from Buncombe County. Uh, my wife is uh, Zen, and she has repeatedly written and made personal, uh, personal requests of the school board, the technology director, and principals for over a year. Uh, the fact is that the response has been insufficient to fulfill uh, the legal obligation to provide a safe school environment. The science is very clear. Our children are being exposed to harmful wireless radiation. We are asking you to take action to protect our children. My wife has taken three measurements of the radiation at the school with a professional meter at the readings of 7,500, 37,000, and 1.7 million microwatts per square meter. The European guidelines for wireless radiation exposure for a duration of only six minutes is 10 microwatts per square meter during the day, one at night, and 0.1 for sensitive groups. Children are sensitive groups. It is important to understand the signal level required to obtain the maximum speed from a Wi-Fi router is less than 0.01 microwatts per square meter. The fact is the level of Wi-Fi is much higher than is needed for our children's devices to work properly. We are asking you to form a committee to consider and address the following questions. One, would you consider turning the power down to no higher than 20% for the entire district? Two, would you consider a professional assessment once the power density is reduced? Three, would you consider cell phone policy for all the schools, including no cell phone use in class? Four, would you consider working with the facility to reduce the use of wireless devices with more of a focus on actual books? Five, would you consider moving all the wireless access points in the district to a location in the rooms with the least traffic? And six, consider on-off controls in classrooms so teachers can turn it off only when it's needed, turn, turn it on when it's needed, and this would be accompanied with training uh, for the teachers on how to use that. I'm asking to, to form a committee to take action immediately to prevent loss of potential of our students, providing you with step-by-step -step actions from the Tech Safe School programs and the handouts you have uh, that can be taken immediately to reduce the levels of exposure to our children. Other schools have done this, we can too. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And it's Bodie Honeycutt. Hi, my name is Bodie Honeycutt, and I'm a junior from North, uh, North Buncombe High School. And I'm here today because I want to ask the board to do whatever you can to reduce the levels of wireless radiation in schools. I've been a straight A student for years, and recently I started to feel depressed and unable to focus at school. My, grade, my grades dropped from a D in pre-cal honors math and an F in AP English. Those are my favorite classes. During this time, I noticed I had been sitting underneath a router in almost every single classroom. I sat away from the router and I felt better and was able to focus. This makes you wonder though, what if the router was turned off? How much better could I think and learn? What about the other kids that are sitting underneath the router and don't know about the risks? I know my experience is only one example, so I have a statement from an expert for you as well. Alan Brennan became Ireland's seventh wireless, uh, certified wireless professional and founded Wi-Fi Projects uh, Limited. In 2004, the company became Ireland's first certified wireless network provider. He was awarded Fellow of the Irish Computer Society and for his contribution and promotion of the Irish wireless industry. At no point during his career in the wireless industry was he aware or informed about, about the known thermal exposure health risks and microwave hearing. He sends this statement specifically for a North Buncombe County Board meeting. I quote, as someone who thoroughly believed in the benefits and capabilities of wireless technology, I was completely unaware that an intense Wi-Fi exposure could cause adverse health effects in children. Headaches, earaches, sore eyes, stomach, nosebleeds, skin rash, brain fog, depression, and more. I did not know that children had been identified as a high-risk group in 2011. In order to protect our children's best interests, schools should use wired networks, not Wi-Fi. If a school is using Wi-Fi, the least they can do is adhere to the precautionary, as low as reasonably achievable, L A L R A principles. For example, turn on Wi-Fi when needed and turn off when finished. I, end quote. I submit to you his specific technical recommendations. I hope you will work with the technology director and implement the guidance that the Tech Safe School provides to reduce the exposure to wireless radiation to all students in our school district. We all need the help we can, we, we, need all, we need all the help we can get to think clearly and do well in school. Thank you. Thank you, sir.